Hey, jackass, where's my DoorDash? I don't know. DoorDash had a problem. As their cloud-native environment scaled and developers delivered new features, their monitoring system did what monitoring systems do and kept breaking down. In an organization where data is used to make better decisions about technology and about the business, losing observability means the entire company loses their competitive edge. With Chronosphere, DoorDash is no longer losing visibility into their application suite. What's the key? Chronosphere is an open source, compatible, scalable, and reliable observability solution that gives the observability lead at DoorDash business confidence and peace of mind. To learn more, read the full success story at snark.cloud slash chronosphere success. Ah, Kubernetes, the Greek god of spending money on cloud services, king of container chaos and champion of the paradox of choice. For years, I've snarked at and snubbed Kubernetes. In fact, I've mostly avoided any serious work with containers, particularly in production. But now I find myself kneeling at that Greek god's feet, just a lowly former sysadmin on a hero's quest to conquer the complexities of Kubernetes' open source system. Why? Well, it's basically impossible to avoid Kubernetes at this point. I mean, hey, I still have two more years before everyone's going to stop caring about Kubernetes. I may as well learn it. As luck would have it, I recently began work on a new production service. I've decided to over-engineer the living hell out of it and run it atop of Kubernetes. That process has already been a baffling maze, highlighting just how overwhelming, confusing, and balkanized Kubernetes is for newcomers like me. I mean, just look at the cloud-native computing landscape. So as I start on my project, I'm asking the kind folks on Twitter for a lot of advice as I go. My first question was essentially, how do I get code from my laptop into a Kubernetes cluster efficiently and repeatably so that I can do iterative development on it? The answers span 25 different possible product solutions with no obvious winner emerging. 25. After eight years of existence, shouldn't we have coalesced around best practices more than this? Especially for what seems to me like a basic question, such as how do I get an app in containers into Kubernetes and then iterate rapidly on that app? Meanwhile, I'm over here just absolutely screaming at the sheer diversity of responses. And then it struck me that a lot of the suggestions that I was getting came from folks who work for vendors in this space. And yes, most of these people truly believe in their company's product, and I can't say whether they're right or wrong, but they do have a vested interest in their company's success, which in turn is going to skew my data collection as well as how effective that answer is going to be for my needs instead of theirs. Now how am I supposed to know what the right path is for any of this? Maybe the folks who don't work for vendors and don't have a horse in the race generally all already know that there's just a million different ways to get Kubernetes up and running. I'm convinced at this point though that any company that's managed to get Kubernetes going in a production environment has encountered and overcome these choices. But the odds that they all picked the same path to get there are vanishingly small. I suspect that we run Kubernetes translates into we have a bespoke unicorn that no other company on the planet runs in the same way as we do. So an awful lot of our engineering ingenuity goes towards keeping the metaphorical lights on. Enjoy bumbling through your little Kubernetes experiment, Gary. And let's be clear that I have zero confidence that the answers to any further questions about running Kubernetes are going to be any clearer to me about what the right path is. The paradox of choice tells us that too many options are in fact worse for our puny human brains than having just a few choices, or ideally none at all because decision fatigue is very real. Like the major cloud providers and their service catalogs, Kubernetes seems to have missed that particular memo. But like Theseus approaching the Minotaur's labyrinth, I'm ready to take on the maze of the great Kubernetes. Let's see where this journey winds up taking us over the next few weeks. 
let's see where this journey winds up taking us over the next few weeks. To hell. Thank <laughs> you.